Hey, it's Vlogmas, and I thought I would show you what a more typical Vancouver Island day looks like in winter. It's early December, and it's pouring rain, but there's still farm chores to do, and even though I'm not usually the one to do chores, this week I've been taking you along to do the chores. But today we have a bigger project in mind. I am going to be packing up my little music closet to be able to do a pop-up music performance with students tomorrow at a local cafe. If you watched one of my first Vlogmas episodes, you would have seen that I was talking about the word ease and how that was a word I'd chosen for this season and yet how it sometimes goes sideways. I'm picking up feed containers. We're gonna do the supplements for the animals now. Anyways, so one of those things for ease I chatted about that we're gonna do more simple kind of mini performance opportunities this season instead of the big events that are more time heavy to prepare. But there's still a lot of steps that go in to a successful event. So I'm gonna take you along today and we're gonna unpack my music closet, show you what it takes to set up an event like this. And I can't wait to show you how that's gonna go. Now, when it comes to preparing for events, I take an approach where I do do a lot of the thinking inside my head. And that's not always the best way to go when you're trying to be efficient. But for some reason, it's just how my brain works and I have to go with it. But one thing I almost never do an event without is a list. And you saw that I scratched the list out by hand um, for my Lego event. But usually I actually have those events saved in a Google Docs folder because then I can look back at them, refresh my mind. Sometimes we do repeat events because this is our 14th year as a multi-studio. So then I can draw from previous experiences, which is obviously really helpful. Okay, I'm gonna put on the necklace of shame so I don't forget that I'm turning the water pump on because the water needs a full refresh. And let me reset that nozzle. So about those lists. So I really do like to have a good list and I've been known to be as prepared as Benadryl and Band-Aids for an outdoor event to extra music for students or maybe some filler tunes myself. So if there's any pauses that need to be filled, I'm ready to go extra accompaniment music. So maybe slightly over prepared, but for me that takes a lot of stress off. And I feel like over the years, it's been handy for teachers as well. I have a few things in mind before I start an event. So I know that I like to uh, take time to make sure we have a sign-in checklist. And so that's something I print off before we leave. I also have a list the week before, so some of our venues need insurance certificates or I make sure that venue rentals, those invoices are sent to Jeff's side on the accounting, so it's all paid up. I also make a note to send notes to the different venues a week in advance so that they are reminded of any staffing needs they have or janitorial and that we know that we have the keys that we need if it's a rental where there's not someone to let us in. So those are a few things that I do in advance. This necklace of shame right here, reminding me that I have to go do the water before I take out the next load of hay. You can see that we open and close gates as we go, because that's so important with animals. Nobody wants to be chasing cows down a road. Not that that hasn't happened before, I prefer it to chasing the pigs, but that was a story a long time ago. If you're a more detailed person, you're gonna be thinking, oh, I hope that she's turning that water off. So here we go, here's the proof. The water's full and I'm turning it off. No Olympic swimming pools full of water waste. That was another bad situation. Okay, the next thing that I think about when I'm doing my list, and you might already do this, but if not, I hope that it's uh, helpful to you. Or if you already create lists, but you'd like to add some more ideas, then I love that. What's your must have if you're planning an event? I'd love to know. 
So I love to think about what I need the moment I walk into the venue. So for me, that might mean that I have a thank you card ready in advance for the venue rental or the facility that has us. So I know that that'll be on my list so I don't forget to thank them. I also know that I'll want our motif sign-in sheet. I like to have an emergency contact for drop-offs and we get them to add their cell phone number uh, right at the door. So we know that who we're passing the student back to if it's not a family event. And it also gives us a point of contact. I put our cell phone number on the check-in. That's something else that can be helpful. And we have the pickup time posted really clearly. And usually my wonderful colleague teacher, Nat, welcomes people. She's done it for 14, 14 years now. It's amazing. You can see I need to do more of this. Talking and choring is getting me out of breath. The next thing I'll think about is how it's gonna look as we go in the door. So if we're gonna bring our motif sign, we have a sandwich board sign that goes on the street or in front of the venue. This time it'll be at a coffee shop. So we'll put that out and that will be one of the first things that we do to just mark where we are and a little bit of street side marketing, which is helpful. And then I'll think about how we want that welcome table to be. So. tablecloth, any pens or pencils we need for the sign-in sheet, and if there's something like a pride straw or any other decor we want, the table is the first thing we see. And that was first on my list. You can see no cows were chasing me through the field because I gave them their alfalfa first. I gave them their alfalfa first because one of our steers is starting to get a bit too bouncy when we're in the field, so we take a few extra precautions. The cow, Georgia, is very tame and gentle, but we start to be careful as those steers are reaching maturity. Okay, that was a total cliffhanger, and you can see it's so wet that my mascara is also running, so this is just real life over here. So I was just saying that it is not my favorite thing to take apart my teaching closet because it's gonna be on a Sunday at the event, and then I start teaching right away at 9.30 on Monday morning. So it means just that fast turnover. And again, we've got busy family life. So it's just a little extra step. But one thing I am really excited about is that it'll give me a good excuse to have this all cleaned up. So when I have my last teaching week, I'll know that it's clean and ready to go for the new year. So next up, let's take this thing apart. Let's see what's in my teaching closet that makes it so awesome. And thanks for coming along for this adventure. Okay, while I'm in here, I'm going to be hole punching a bunch of loose music that I had printed off. Most of it was just too much for me to get finished. It was all Christmas resources. So thanks for joining me today. Let me know what things you love to include in your setup if you're getting out and about with music making alongside students.